What's up guys, in today's video a breakdown of the week ahead for Euro dollar, Aussie dollar and pound dollar. So with that said, let's dive in and see where the markets are heading next. So starting off with the weekly time frame, the weekly time frame, of course, moved very bearish in towards the downside after this break of structure on the weekly and has seen a pullback with some bullish order flow back in towards this area of supply, which is in line with the overall EQ. If you look and see this as your entire swing in towards the downside. So pretty much price is now pulled back in towards the 50 percent. And if you know how to trade premium and discount, we now all know that price has come back in towards premium levels and is therefore high probability or higher probability to move back down into towards the downside. So looking at this weekly area of supply, we can of course see that initial reaction on the 30th of January tapped in or wicked in and then pushed down. However, then met demand over here in the sub for the buy candle and saw a further push up in towards the highs with the overall daily bullish order flow on which I'll touch upon in a second. Now looking at the overall market, it does look pretty much yeah, like price could see a push back in towards the downside. If you consider this high over here as a liquidity high, also we can of course see that the weekly time frame failed to close above this wick, which for me is never kind of like a very good tail sign. So it could be that this is kind of like your second liquidity grab, tap in towards supply and price is now ready to pretty much dump back down in towards the lows. However, are we going to just start dumping on Monday? Let's have a look at the daily time frame because the daily time frame, of course, is still bullish. If we look at the daily, um, pretty much what we expected last week um, occurred, we saw, of course, a new close above this high, meaning that we now have a new higher high formed. Well, of course, the new higher high could also be located over here. It kind of depends on where the pullback starts or is initiated. Now, we have pretty much this area of daily supply located over here. Of course, we could drag down the zone in towards here because this is where pretty much the buy before the sell off starts. So this entire range is supply. And then of course, what you can see is that we reacted. However, preferably, you always want to take like the pivot, which is that last candle um, as your area of supply. And then we can see that it's still untouched. For now, um, what we can mention, of course, is that after a break of structure, we expect a pullback. So I am expecting a pullback. However, preferably it would occur from this yeah, most recent um, pivot uh, supply zone on the daily time frame. Uh, this could just be the liquidity grab and kind of like a fake out on the high and then dump in towards the downside. It's pretty much going to be dependent on how we open on uh, Monday. Um, so I'll just be keeping my eyes out. Of course, this is pretty much your order flow zone this entire sell before the buy. So price could just tap a little bit lower on Monday and then potentially pull back up again. But what I'll be waiting for preferably is either a long once we kind of like tap in towards, let's say this zone, a back up in towards the highs before, let's say one more big sell off in towards the downside. Um, that's what I'm going to be keeping my eyes open for. This is also pretty much your only, let's say fresh sell before the buy, your only fresh area of demand as pretty much all of these other zones. So let's say this sell before the buy, um, and then let's take this sub for the buy. Let's take this sub for the buy. All of them have pretty much been mitigated. So price should react to this area over here, um, kind of like this orange uh, blue box, excuse me, uh, before moving up higher in towards, let's say that final area of supply from where we're either going to see a big sell off in towards downside, or if we break it, then we can start looking with more confidence for further longs. Now, looking at the four hour time frame, what can we see? Um, pretty much took out this zone over here. And let me just go back in towards the daily time frame because what I want to point out, um, oh no, wait, let me go back in towards the four hour. Um, what I want to point out on the four hour now is that it's pretty much very interesting to see that we now have this liquidity zone formed because this liquidity zone, I call it a liquidity zone because it saw a takeout of this area of liquidity over here. So this is your four hour liquidity. As we can see, early sellers get hit by this kind of like push one more time up in towards the highs and then pretty much that big sell off. So this for me is a very strong area of supply and what I preferably would want to see before I take any further longs is a pullback from let's say or into there and then look for those shorts in towards downside and then for example look for one more long and then kind of like see okay how do we react here can I kind of start taking shorts or am I going to be looking for those longs um, but for me this is a high probability area of supply I'll be keeping my eyes out for that zone due to the fact that it took out liquidity over here quick lesson if you do kind of like see liquidity being taken and then kind of like this V-shaped reaction, strong reaction, 
um, you know that this is kind of like your liquidation, then these areas of supply are always going to be very strong. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so at the moment, that's pretty much what I'm waiting for. Either price just kind of like dumps down lower in towards, let's say, this area of demand. Then, of course, just wait how we react on the 15 or this area or this area. Um, this is now your swing low. This is now your swing high. Preferably, I would just like to see one more push up then the sell off. But if we sell off first, then I'll just be looking for longs from these areas due to the fact that the daily is bullish and the four hour is bullish as well. And of course, you know what I'm kind of like looking at on the weekly time frame. Weekly does look bearish, but the weekly is just too much of a high time frame to kind of like be looking at um, when you take these 50 minute trades. So just quick pop in towards the 15 for a sec. Um, 15 minutes is kind of like this. Um, it is bearish at the moment. Preferably, what you want to see is kind of like one more tap in towards here, for example, then take those longs and then look for shorts once we kind of like come in towards this zone, which is, of course, um, that area of four hour liquidity which is over here on this high so that would be a nice short from that area of four hour supply in towards downside but if for example do not see any reaction to this zone then just wait until we come back down lower in towards this area of demand on the four hour and then just look how the 15 minute reacts so yeah that's pretty much it from your dollar hope that was a clear analysis for you all um let's head over to aussie dollar So Aussie dollar, what can we expect? Aussie dollar, um, pretty much, yeah, very interesting pair. Um, starting on the daily time frame. Daily time frame is of course still bearish. Um, if we look at the overall order flow, we can see that this is your high, this is your low. Um, what is interesting to see, of course, is that we're still stuck pretty much inside of that range from here to here. So very choppy price action from a daily perspective. Preferably, we would have wanted to see kind of like a break of this high and a push higher in towards this supply zone before, for example, looking for those sells. However, we did not see that push. So why is that? Well, if we look at the four hour time frame, we can just really see that we're consolidating and that we grab liquidity above this high. So, so this high, we grab liquidity above it, tapped in towards this extreme pivot um, and then sold off. So we're now stuck inside of this area of demand. Um, so we pretty much have two interesting areas of demand over here. Um, the only issue, by the way, with looking for longs is that we failed to take out this high, right? So this high failed to get close above. So this was just really a liquidity grab, tap in towards supply, fueling that V-shaped reaction in towards downside and could signify that we are gonna see lower prices on Aussie dollar. We are inside of this area of demand. What I want to point out is that on Monday, if we see that further sell off and we see a break of this area of demand, that means that this area of supply is pretty strong. What I like about this area of supply as well is that it pretty much liquidated um, all the highs. It not only liquidated, let's say, this high, but it also liquidated its own high. And it's pr pretty much what I pointed out on your dollar just now, right? Um, it's pretty much kind of like a liquidity um, supply zone, which is very strong. Uh, and I would preferably want to take sales from here in line with the overall daily trend. So if we see that occur, um, let's just say we can look for shorts. This zone is going to be stronger if we take out at least this area of demand. Um, let's say we start selling off. We just see a small pullback, sell off, and then, for example, start pulling back up in towards that supply zone. Then it's going to be high probability shorts. Of course, the 50 minute needs to line up, etc. cetera. Um, but then I'll be happy to look for shorts from there. At the moment, not the biggest fan of taking longs um, due to the fact, of course, that we're pretty much just ranging and price could move anywhere. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I'm looking at for Aussie dollar. Um, let's just wait and see how we react on Monday and what price will do um, inside of here. Quickly looking at the 15 minute. Yeah, nothing really interesting. So I'll just wait uh, and see um, what happens over there. What I'll like, by the way, is that we have that area of uh, four hour supply and that I would prefer we also want to sell from this area on the 15, which is stacked with that area on the four hour due to this kind of like liquidation high. So if we take out that high, that would be a beautiful short in towards the downside. But yeah, of course we need further development for this. Pretty much kind of like my explanation is that if we would want to take longs from here, we would have needed to see it close above this high. Did not happen. So personally, this is just kind of like a liquidity grab tapping towards this supply to fuel lower prices. Looking at the daily, we are still bearish. So that's it for Aussie dollar. Now looking at pound dollar, what we can see over here on pound dollar is also pretty much the same as an Aussie dollar and Euro dollar. Let's see if this kind of like analysis is going to line up across all pairs. This is your area of supply. This area of supply is pretty high probability because again, it's a kind of like a liquidation supply zone. Again, it took out this high over here. 
So it acted as a kind of like liquidation area of supply, right? We took out the high, kind of like faked out all this buy side liquidity and then boom, sold off in towards the downside with a kind of like a V-shaped reaction, meaning that there's a lot of supply inside of here. Um, for the rest, all of kind of like this order flow, all of these blue zones over here have already been mitigated, meaning that there's not a lot of kind of like buying pressure anymore left in pound dollar. Also, if you look at the overall kind of like how price moved in towards the upside, it's not kind of like very impulsive, it's pretty choppy. So meaning that there's a lot of liquidity below these lows, and I would not be surprised if pound dollar is now ready to sell off in towards the downside after grabbing liquidity above its own high. So preferably what you wanna see is kind of like a break like this, push and then push further down. So on Monday, preferably kind of like take out this low over here, then pull back, then further sell off in towards the downside. Um, that is preferable for pound dollar. Um, quickly moving down lower in towards the four hour time frame because that is my main time frame. What you of course can see um, is that the demand zone over here is still holding. Um, so that is a sign that price could still move up. Preferably, I would like to see it get taken because that would just further kind of like strengthen this area of supply over here. Um, what I'll be waiting for on Monday is pretty much kind of like a pullback. But yeah, if you look at this zone, this area kind of like again, it's a liquidation zone, very strong. Took out its own high and then sold off. But then straight away, you can kind of like see it sold off. Took out these lows push down, pull back, push down, uh, pull back inside of this wick. So it pretty much already liquidated that zone over there, meaning that your main area of supply is now located inside of this candle, this doji candle, this fat doji candle. So what I'd like to see is pretty much um, a break of this area of demand on Monday, and then a pullback, and then a further sell-off. Highest probability, guys, highest probability is that if we can break this low over here on Monday, um, further sell off in towards downside. Let's say we just see kind of like a minor pullback, then push down in towards pretty much, let's say this over here, liquidate this low, um, and then just expanding this area of demand like this, for example, take out that low over here and see a break of structure, um, pull back, then let's say pull back, take out this liquidity, which is then formed above this high, tap in towards this area of strong supply, which is stacked with that daily area of supply, which again is also strong because it's uh, taking out its own high. Um, that would be very high probability shorts for me. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be looking for. I hope you guys understand my analysis and what I mean with kind of like these liquidity zones. Um, we can see this four hour is stacked with that daily. So it's yeah, just super strong. Um, again, we've just been chopping in towards the highs. I'm not a very big fan anymore of pound dollar longs due to pretty much just, yeah, we are hustling this kind of like slow price action towards the highs. It doesn't have to mean anything, but that's just pretty much what I've seen in the past. Um, when you kind of have this, let's say break of a high, like we had over here, and then straight away kind of like that V-shaped direction towards the downside, it pretty much means that these bulls are worn out and we could see these lower prices. Um, still, if we don't, so let's say, see kind of like a break of this zone or we don't see a pullback all the way down and a break of structure, I'll still be happy to kind of like see how we come in towards the zone to look for those potential shorts. Could be totally wrong, but that is, of course, uh, my analysis for now. Looking at pound dollar as a whole, um, I would be a fan also looking at pretty much us having some supply over here. Um, eventually from where that move in towards the downside again initiated to take out these lows over here. We've pretty much el uh, eliminated all liquidity above, let's say this high, this high, its own highs. Um, so let's see, we've had pretty much three taps, high, high, high break, and then boom, sell off. That would be favorable back down in towards this low area of weekly demand. Okay, so that's it guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Pretty extensive analysis. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe uh, and join the free telegram in the description down below. Have a great weekend. Have a great Monday, whatever. And we will speak very soon. Thanks guys.